Now we go to Mike Davis, founder and president of the Article 3 Project and former chief counsel for nominations for the U.S. Senate Committee on the Judiciary. Mike, great to see you as always. Uh, a lot to unpack here, but first, I want to get your thoughts on what we just heard from Eric about the push to possibly replace uh, Senator Dianne Feinstein, a Democrat from California. What do you make of all this, and, and how do you think this is going to play out? I think it's going to play out that Senator Feinstein is going to return to work in a week or so. And I don't understand why the Democrats think that they need to break the Senate rules to put another Democrat on the committee. There's no chance the Democrats would allow Republicans to do this. So why should Republicans make it easier for President Biden to appoint radical judicial uh, nominees uh, faster than he's already doing? Mike, I want to switch gears now. I want to talk about the Supreme Court, specifically um, Justice Clarence Thomas, a Catholic. Uh, he's been in the news recently in part because of a real estate deal uh, and his friendship with the billionaire real estate developer. Um, what more can you tell us about this and the issue? Well, see, uh, Ariane DeVogue in CNN published a good piece today. She's the Supreme Court reporter that laid out the details of that uh, of that deal. But we have to remember that Harlan Crow is Justice Thomas's best friend of 25 years. Harlan Crow has zero business before the Supreme Court, unlike other justices who take trips with lawyers who are at law firms and serve on company boards with business before the court regularly. Justice Thomas, J Justice Thomas's best friend, uh, does not have any business before the court. So. There, there's, uh, they're, they're try this is part of a 31-year pattern by the Democrats to try to chase Justice Thomas off the court because Democrats can't accept that Justice Thomas is a conservative black judge who thinks for himself. Yeah, something else um, happening today, uh, there was a House Judiciary Committee hearings um, earlier today in Manhattan. Lawmakers say uh, that they were probing Democrats' quote, pro-crime, anti-victim policies. Democrats say it's merely an attempt to embarrass D.A. Alvin Bragg, who recently indicted former President Donald Trump. Um, what do you make of these hearings, Mike? And do you think they'll have any type of effect? I do think that they're going to have an effect. And I think uh, this Soros-funded Manhattan DA, Alvin Bragg, should be embarrassed because he is taking the resources of the Manhattan DA's office to indict a former president for the first time in American history. This former president happens to be the leading presidential candidate against Bragg's party. Uh, and Bragg has politicized and weaponized the Manhattan DA's office. The prior DA declined to bring these charges. The Federal Election Commission declined to bring these charges. The, uh, the Manhattan U.S. Attorney declined to bring these charges. Uh, even Alvin Bragg declined to bring these charges when he first got elected into, into office. He took heat from the left, so he hired a Biden Justice Department senior official, Matthew Colangelo, and they re resuscitated these dead zombie case, this dead zombie case against Trump. And this is part of a pattern by the Democrats. They fear they can't beat Trump in the polls, so they're simply going to indict him. So I, I say cheers to House Judiciary Committee Chairman Jim Jordan for shining a bright spotlight on New York's crime because Bragg is focused on a political witch hunt instead of protecting Manhattan. Mike, we have probably about 30 seconds left or so, but I want to touch on something else that's topping the news today. Uh, Budweiser uh, just released a new ad featuring its iconic Clydesdales, and they're galloping through the U.S. And it comes on the heels of its Bud Light ad featuring transgender influencer Dylan Mulvaney. Uh, that ad, as you know, received a lot of backlash, and Budweiser took a huge hit, uh, a $4 billion loss in their stock value. Curious what you think about this new ad and, and why it's happening now. Well, I would say to Budweiser, you should know your audience. And uh, when you insult your audience with uh, ridiculous woke campaigns, uh, there's there's going to be a backlash. And their backlash is like $5 billion now. So, uh, you know, th they have a very, very, very deep hole to dig out of at Budweiser. All right, we're going to leave right there, Mike. As always, thank you so much for coming on. Great to get your insights. Thank you.